So today I've got great news for youth workers. CPYU has put together a youth ministry training opportunity that we know will encourage and equip you as you look for ways to effectively minister to kids and their families. And I want to invite you to join us for four days in March to hear from 16 gifted youth ministry trainers in five plenary sessions and your choice of 28 different breakout sessions. Listen in as we introduce the Northeast Youth Ministry Summit and how to bring biblical hope to anxious hearts on this episode of Youth Culture Matters. From the Center for Parent Youth Understanding, this is Youth Culture Matters. If you're a parent, youth worker, educator, counselor, grandparent, or anyone else who cares about kids, we're glad you've joined us for this practical, informative, and hope-filled podcast. This is a place where together we talk and think Christianly about the rapidly changing world of today's children, teens, and young adults. Well, welcome everybody to another episode of Youth Culture Matters. I'm Walt Mueller here at CPYU, and I got to tell you, I'm pretty excited about this particular episode of the podcast because we are going to talk about an event that's coming up that CPYU is partnering with Reformed Youth Ministries, RYM, on, and it's a youth ministry training event. We're getting back into the circle of youth ministry training in a more formal way. We're going to tell you more about what's going to be happening, but I want to welcome first Kyle Hoffsmith. Kyle is the youth pastor at Old North Church in Canfield, Ohio, and he's one of the co-hosts. Many of you will know his voice uh, from the podcast that we do here at CPYU called The Word in Youth Ministry, and Kyle heads that up, and it's a great podcast. It's gotten a lot of traction. If you haven't heard it, check it out. Kyle, welcome. Yeah, Walt, good to be here. Thankful to be talking to you and drinking coffee out of my Youth Culture Matters coffee mug at the same time. Yes, and I have my uh, Gordon Conwell Doctor of Ministry mug that I'm drinking from. Chris, what are you drinking from? Do we know? Uh, I've got uh, I've got tea in a Mount Joy, Pennsylvania mug and uh, coffee in a Panera cup. Okay. All right. Well, we're advertising all kinds of things here. So, well, Walt, I did want to say this morning I was uh, I meet with students actually at Panera every Monday morning to homeschool uh, high school boys, uh, and we read theology books. And on my way uh, there this morning, I was listening to a previous episode of this podcast. And just want to say thank you for the good work you do. It's helpful for youth workers. Yeah, well, good. Thanks, Kyle. I, we're up to what now? We're up over 160 episodes, right? Chris? 160 done... some, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is got... episode 163. 163, okay. All right, well, uh, Kyle, we, we uh, want to talk a little bit about youth ministry training. You're a, a boots-on-the-ground guy. I've been involved in youth ministry for oh, well over 40 years now, starting back full-time in 1978 and been at Man, just about every youth ministry training conference that's out there in one way, shape, or form, you know, so many over the years. And it seems like a lot of it has died off over the last few years. It's gotten a lot slower. I know COVID has played into that and some other things. Uh, But can you talk a little bit from your perspective as a youth worker about the importance of training, but not only for you, but for your volunteer team, the others that are on your staff there at Old North? Yeah, I think when we think about youth ministry training, uh, Walt, as you were just saying, as you've been involved in all of these different avenues of youth ministry training, I think it's it's helpful to think about because over the past few years, especially since COVID hit, um, there's obviously options that any youth worker has in order of thinking through how can I be trained. If I think about my morning I've had so far today, it's Monday morning, I met with a couple students to read theology, just had a parent meeting with a parent who's thinking through um, how, uh, how to be a parent of a high schooler who is rebellious. Um, there's, there's not a lack of need for youth ministry training. The question more is what youth ministry training do I want to get and when and where can I get it? And so, um, if we think about just different categories that we put them in, um, and even just thinking about uh, this conversation we're having about this upcoming event that we're partnering with, um, I, I think the need is great. The question is just, um, when are youth workers going to come? Yeah, yeah. And and it, by the way, there are options out there, and that's why mm-hmm. uh, we want to let let folks know about this, because it's new. Uh, it has not happened before, and we're doing this in part, partnership with Reform Youth Ministries. That being said, I want to welcome a couple of my friends, uh, Brent Corbin and then also Michael Hall, 
who are involved with RYM. You guys, just uh, tell us a little bit about RYM, but go ahead first, Brent. Let's start with you and a little bit about your position there, and then we'll go to Michael, and then we want to hear about Reform Youth Ministries because many may not be familiar uh, with what you folks are doing. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Walt. It's really great to be on and uh, to be uh, in front of your audience talking about this exciting event with y'all. Uh, RYM has long appreciated what CPYU does, and having now gotten to know you a little bit through the planning of this, I've just gotten more and more excited about being with you up there and uh, personally just getting to participate in this in whatever capacity uh, I can. So, yeah, I've, I've only been actually with RYM since, uh, since last May uh, when I came on board as its new executive director. Uh, it's a position that I'm thrilled to be in, and my, my joy and excitement in getting to serve this way has only grown over the last seven months as I've been more and more involved and have gotten to participate in our conferences and been uh, involved in how the resources get put together and get distributed to our the people in our network and uh, elsewhere, and now kind of getting to turn the page and enter into our training season through the spring, uh, both with the RYM Youth Leader Training event we do in Nashville in January and now uh, this event with you guys. So uh, it's it's just a it's a space that I'm I'm very passionate about. Uh, I served in college ministry for the better part of 14 years, a little bit before seminary, and then for a long uh, while after seminary uh, through RUF, and just loved the idea and the opportunity to think about equipping, reaching, and equipping the next generation of the church and uh, those uh, those times and those pinch points in people's lives, it's kind of the, I would think of it as the hourglass where, you know, there's so many decisions being made in such a short kind of condensed period of time uh, before people then fan back out and enter the rest of their life and um, go different places, uh, create, you know, start families, get married, take jobs, just vocation and all that stuff comes to being. So the opportunity the church has and the calling the church has to influence uh, youth in that age is so, so important. And so uh, it's, it's, it's so, such a big deal that uh, it's worth giving all of our energy and effort to and asking the Lord to uh, to bless the efforts because it's so important. Brent, I actually, before we move on, I have a question for you that I think is helpful for our listeners. So you spent uh, 10 to 15 years working with college students. And as you think about now what you're what you're doing with RYM and even training events like this one that we're talking about, what what really excites you about the fact that as we train youth workers, then they are able to train these students even before they get to college, right? Be, like these yep. would be impacting these students before they even got to you when you were working on a college campus. Can you just unpack that a little bit for us? Yeah, totally. Yeah, that was uh, last fall as I was interviewing with the board of RYM and in that's kind of one of the things we talked about quite a bit because, you know, if I have any sort of ministry expertise, it would have been in the college realm. So they were asking me about how that would translate to the to a younger crowd or younger constituency through churches and youth leaders and stuff. And uh, the, the thing that just kept coming into my mind was the shift that I saw personally happen over the number of years I've been involved in college ministry. Um, it, and it was drastic from just basic biblical literacy of the average college student when I began uh, working with college students to when I then phased out just even this last spring, uh, it's drastic. Um, what what students come to college knowing about scripture, uh, just obviously the broader um, cultural shifts, and I don't say that as like a boogeyman thing, it just it's just true. Uh, mm -hmm. Things have moved very quickly over the last 10 or 15 years. Um, and the the result of that, just kind of the concentric circles and, you know, <laughs> splash zone, whatever you want to call it, of some of the um, broader cultural changes, it, it has had a big impact on college students. And so as I began to think about reaching and equipping youth or, you know, serving churches toward that end, I just thought, man, what more important place is there to be? Um, because as these issues have gotten um, pushed further or earlier and earlier in people's lives, the church's call to uh, embrace that and to uh, then equip, reach and equip those youth uh, with these bigger issues, certainly always the perennial issues of, of scripture and just the eternal truths of God's word. But some of the questions that, well, let me make it really personal. <laughs> some of the things that I was talking to my own junior high children about over the last few years are questions that I only thought about in college. 
and here I am talking to my sixth grader and eighth grader about big questions of, you know, identity and whatever amorphous terms that could <laughs> is, uh, sexuality. I mean, just all kinds of stuff. And so, I mean, the need is it's imminent. It's right in front of us uh, to train youth leaders so that then in turn they can go out, go out and, um, you know, address these issues and reach uh, these students with the gospel and, and biblical truths on these issues. Brent, before Kyle asked that question of you, I, I'm sitting here and I'm writing down some things just about, you know, why we're doing this training, which we haven't even named yet. We'll name it in a couple of minutes so folks know more about it and talk more about exactly what's going to happen. But I wrote down three things uh, regarding the need. Uh, biblical illiteracy, which you mentioned, uh, changes in culture, the issues in culture, the shifts in culture, which you mentioned, and then the decline in lasting faith, which anecdotally we see as our students leave youth group and, and go to the university campus. And not just anecdotally, but the research, all the research is pointing to this. And so, uh, yeah, you, you really nailed it there on, on the need. And I just want to just chime in on something you said. You, t- you know, your work on campus was primarily – uh, for the most part, with students who were coming out of the church, right? And many of them from Christian homes. So you're seeing those things there as well, correct? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it was both and. Um, yeah. RUF and its kind of mission, we certainly are there to minister to to covenant kids as they would come onto our campus. But there's also a huge evangelistic component. I mean, the moment you step onto a college campus, you are doing evangelism, if you're doing your job faithfully at all, because... Uh, I mean, there's just so many different kinds of people there and you walk into a cafeteria or a gym and as you get to know people's friends, again, you're, you're in evangelistic conversations and relationships very quickly. So, but, but it is true. I mean, there are, there would certainly be a, a large percentage of any given group. Um, I mean, I say that with exceptions in my mind, if you're yeah, doing RUF yeah. in the Northeast or on the West Coast, or just some dis- disparate places that may be less, your group may be less churched. Mm. But, um, yes, it is true. Um, yeah. The churched students that uh, the average campus minister would receive um, would have less and less biblical literacy uh, as the years go on. Yeah. Now, nobody can see us here. The five of us can see each other. Chris is here in the studio. Kyle, Brent, you're there. And then Michael's in Virginia. Uh, and we've left Michael hanging. And I notice while I watch him, he's eating his breakfast. So I don't know if we're going to catch you at a good point here between Bites Michael or not. Oh, a drink, a sip. So uh, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and your involvement with uh, RYO over the years and, and the conference ministry you guys have. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> thanks, Walt. And just so you know, I'm eating a whoopie pie. Um, Ooh, good so Lancaster County, yeah. Uh, Lancaster yeah. County whoopie pie. So yeah. uh, I want to say thank you to um, – thank you for making them, Lancaster County. Anyway, uh, uh, I – so I'm the director of training with RYM, served in a few churches for a little over 20 years as a youth pastor, came on staff with RYM uh, about six years ago, kind of trying to lean into our training efforts, things that RYM does that are very leader centric, um, training events, intern program and stuff. And, you know, and my heart really beats for exactly what you guys were talking about. You know, so many of our churches uh, are, their their youth ministries, if you will, are, are led by um, younger folks who love the Lord want to want to impact students' lives, um, but you know even going to seminary doesn't necessarily mean that you know you kind of have everything you need to do ministry. Mm-hmm. I mean, I went to seminary and uh, I started going to RYM's YLT after being in ministry about ten years, and all of a sudden I started to kind of make some connections and have some tracks to run on. So uh, I think what I love about the opportunity we have both CPYU and RYM and others is, is to really help churches see youth ministry uh, with such a high, um, a high importance uh, to move away from. And I, I think the church has come a long way from this, but move, move away from what the latter part of last, you know, the last century was very entertainment driven, very siloed, um, very, what can we do to keep kids in church? And the, the fruit of that was kids leaving the church um, and, you know, teaching them the Bible, teaching them theology, but, but sometimes the most important thing can be having a context in your local church of, of men and women who love the Lord, who just know them and are present in their lives, kind of the non-parental Christian adults who can be knowledgeable to a certain degree, um, 
and uh, being a part of their life so that when they do leave home, whether it's to the workforce, to the military, to the university, that they come away with a, a sense of grounding, a sense of identity as they're part of something bigger than themselves um, to navigate some of the challenges that come their way. And uh, and I believe, uh, you know, the training we're doing in Nashville and especially the one we're going to be talking about today that like it, it's a it is going to be a beautiful picture of combining. And this is really my heartbeat in training. You know, our, sometimes our best resources are one another. Um, you know, we're, we're not trying to just say, hey, go read a book uh, and you get all your answers. We need one another. We need content. That's where we can get some training from teachers, practitioners, counselors, you know, scholars. Um, and we also need to get away. Um, and what what the what the Northeast Youth Ministry Summit is going to do and what YLT seeks to do is to allow you leaders to get away from the hustle and bustle of their church and their hometown, go to somewhere beautiful, uh, maybe, um, and Ligon area is a beautiful place, be able to connect with other youth workers, men and women who are kind of in the in the game with them. Um, maybe their church is big or small, their church is rural or urban, uh, but when you get down to it, they kind of, they have that similar heartbeat. They want the next generation to know uh, the Lord and what he's done for his people, and they want them to know Jesus and how he's at work in their lives through the Spirit as they spend time in the Scriptures with one another. So getting together to to equip them with great content, a full fire hydrant. I mean, if you look at the lineup for the summit, man, we've got so much stuff there um, that you can you can try your best to sit under all of it because there's going to be a lot of great content. But there's going to be a lot of great folks there to connect with and and build relationships and grow in your relationships, people you know, people you haven't met yet. And also through the preaching of the word and worship mm. and just some refreshment, we hope that leaders would leave there encouraged um, that that the Lord is smiling over them. The Lord is at work. His word is at work in their ministries, um, and they can come away with some refreshment as well. Yeah, that's good. So well stated. And you named it, right? So we're calling this the Northeast Youth Ministry Summit. It's going to happen March 6th to 9th of 2023. That's coming up. Uh, you can find more information at uh, N. How do we how do we say the uh, I'm, I get a little confused here because real quickly right the uh, nymsummit.org nym summit summit right because <clears throat> I unfortunately nyms was taken it was and you know I googled this this is kind of funny when I looked that up when we first named this the Northeast Youth Ministry Summit it's the New York uh, Microcological Society or something like that I got that third word wrong I'll have to look it up but it's about the study of fungi. Like <laughs> mushrooms and fungus. That so seems I thought, appropriate for yeah, ministry. yeah. It does for youth ministry, right? So that that we'll save that for the you know middle school ministry conference on you know what happens in a guy's cabin on a retreat. I don't know, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so it's going to be in Ligonier, Pennsylvania, which is uh, if you're familiar with Pennsylvania, it's about uh, four hours west of uh, Philadelphia, about an hour and a half outside of Pittsburgh. I know folks are flying in. Most of them are going to come into Pittsburgh. It's in the beautiful Laurel Highlands. Many are familiar with the, with the name Ligonier as a town because of the ministry that started there, Ligonier Ministries with R.C. Sproul that's now down south based in Orlando and uh, thriving down there. But uh, we're going to be at the Ligonier Camp and Conference Center, which we'll talk more about. Michael, one thing you said that was um, you know really important for people to know is you know the, 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 the importance of being together, right? Um, and I thought immediately of our partnership with you guys. I've known RYM for probably, Michael, about as long as you've been there because I got invited into uh, the Youth Leader Training, YLT, in Nashville a few years ago. I've been to a few of those. And then also uh, Lisa and I have been able to, to head down to Panama City Beach. You guys do a huge amount of summer conferences for high schoolers and middle schoolers. Maybe we can hear more about that later but thousands of kids. And so Lisa and I have been able to be a part of that uh, and be a part of doing some some youth ministry training there. So uh, we're going to spend a little time here unpacking what's going to happen at the Northeast Youth Ministry Summit. Uh, and, and let me just say, we called it Northeast because that's where we're having it. But already people are registering from a variety of other places. We know there'll be lots of people driving in, flying in for this. Uh, youth workers, youth workers with their volunteers. And so it's not just limited to folks in the Northeast. It's just basically that's where we're having it. And so we called it the Northeast Youth Ministry Summit. So we're going to take a break. We'll come back. We'll unpack this a bit, tell you more about who's going to be there and what's going to happen. Stick with us.
Hey there, Youth Culture Matters listeners. We've been told that one of our best kept secrets here at CPYU is our one minute daily podcast, Youth Culture Today. Each and every weekday, we release a new episode that's timely, practical, and hope filled, all for an audience of parents, youth workers, and anyone else who cares about kids. Here's a sample from one of our recent Youth Culture Today episodes. Youth Culture Today with Walt Mueller of the Center for Parent Youth Understanding. Since we've just come through the holiday season, all of those holiday movies that are run and rerun countless times each year are fresh in our minds. No doubt, you've had to sometime answer the question, what's your favorite holiday movie? We have favorites in our family. We've watched some of them so many times that we can repeat our favorite lines from memory. This year, I got to thinking about how good we can be at reciting memorable movie or TV lines. And then I began wondering about how well, or not so well, we are at knowing, embracing, and repeating truths from the Bible. Parents, we're to be about the business of nurturing our children in the faith. Joshua's instruction to the Israelites must be repeated to our children. The scripture shall not depart from your mouths, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. For more on youth culture, visit us on the web at cpyu.org. Youth workers, do your parents a favor and get them to subscribe to Youth Culture Today wherever they get their podcasts. And we're back on this episode of Youth Culture Matters. As we're thinking about uh, youth ministry training and the upcoming Northeast Youth Ministry Summit uh, that is going to be here in a few months in Ligonier, Pennsylvania, Uh, As I think about my time just as a youth worker, I'm looking forward and have invited several friends to come. Uh, This site where we are hosting this training um, is a beautiful uh, facility in the middle of the woods where we can come together and think about the most important things. And as we think about this, um, Michael, I was just hoping uh, you could start us out. The theme of this as we um, the main set, the main plenary session is going to be Julie Lowe. And um, it's just on anxiety. And as we think about anxiety and the need to help students think through how to biblically have a have a worldview to navigate the culture that they're in, I was thinking, can you just help us? Um, how did you land on this topic uh, for this training? Thanks a lot, Kyle. Yeah, you know, I think it, it, I talk to youth workers all the time. Walt does as well. As we were thinking about what we wanted to do here. You know, if there's one thing we're hearing youth workers ask about or share that their students are wrestling with, it's, you know, it's sort of an umbrella term, but just anxiety. And it's not only students, but it's it's our cultural moment. Um, and there's lots of factors that play into that. Um, but but we want to we wanted to create some sort of kind of robust, focused target kind of theme that we want to say, hey, here's one thing we're going to definitely spend some good amount of time on. Uh, what can we do to help you? see, understand, appreciate, um, and begin to move towards your students, not only understanding and appreciating kind of their struggle and the reality of the world they're living in, but but to bring the Bible to bear on it. Not in a, hey, if you just read the scriptures and the Bible fixes all your problems, but, but that the scriptures, our good God, who's let us know who he is in the scriptures, has spoken to our hearts, and there is great hope for us in the scriptures. Um, and we're super excited about bringing Julie Lowe over uh, from CCEF, uh, Christian Counseling and Education Foundation. Um, she is just an incredible presenter. Um, she is a very she's very well versed in this particular topic, but also is as a practicing counselor and teacher. Uh, she's been to our trainings before, and uh, she will just people will really really resonate with her. And I think she's going to do a great job. Her two big plenary sessions. One is going to be on trusting God in the midst of uncertainty because there's so much uncertainty. She's going to talk about what that looks like. And then she's going to do a second session um, on walking with those who struggle, where she'll start to move from the concept and the reality of where we are to how we can begin to walk with those. Uh, And excitingly enough, Julie's also going to be doing one of our seminars, uh, the shorter versions on on ways to help as well. So Julie's bringing a lot of her resources to bear. Uh, And we're really hopeful that that people will will feel seen that, hey, yeah, this this theme really meets me where I am as a leader because my students are really wrestling with this. Yeah, and I'm going to echo what Michael just said just about youth workers asking about this. And it's not just youth workers. We're hearing it from parents. We're hearing it from pastors. Uh, you know, the culture at large is talking about this. We just recorded, or excuse me, I just wrote this morning uh, one of our upcoming radio spots for a couple of weeks out. And it, I wrote it on a uh, in a, a little bit of research. It came from Stanford University. 
they've been studying uh, the adolescent brain. And by the way, whenever I get talking about the adolescent brain, I get excited because all the research that's being done talks about how we're, shows how we're integrated beings, that God made us integrated beings, and the experiences we have in our lives really do shape or sometimes misshape us. And in this case, it was some research on the pandemic. They looked at adolescent brains before the pandemic, after the pandemic, you know, comparable brains, and they found that those who were assessed after the pandemic, their brain had actually aged and aged further than those uh, prior to had same age prior to the pandemic. And it, they're seeing brain age advancement like it, because of the pan- pandemic uh, that they only see elsewhere when kids grow up under chronic adversity, such as neglect and family dysfunction. And that's where anxiety figures into this. And so when Michael and I were talking about this and we thought about this theme, biblical hope for anxious hearts, we said, all right, let's get somebody in who can focus specifically on anxiety and, and then let's build uh, a conference around that where maybe we're going to look at some of the issues kids are dealing with that are a result of anxiety or some of the issues kids are dealing with that cause anxiety. And so it's really interesting to see how this has all come together. And I want to mention that we've sandwiched our days, right? So it's going to be full of, what do we have, Michael? Is it like tw- I think it's like 28 breakout sessions. But we have the morning plenaries with uh, Julie. And by the way, that'll be Tuesday and Wednesday morning. We start Monday right after lunch on March 6th. But in the evenings, we're going to gather together. And this is where I think it's going to going to be just really refreshing to come together and worship. Uh, you can talk, Michael, about Joe Deegan coming up to lead worship from Houston. But um, Chris Walker, Dr. Chris Walker is going to come in. He's young. He's winsome. I know him well. He's a, a fantastic, uh, you know, student of the scriptures and a wonderful preacher, and he's going to walk us through on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights uh, just some thoughts on the scripture and anxiety that will not only equip us to minister to our kids and respond well, bringing the light of God's Word to bear on the realities of anxiety and stress and depression and suicide that exist in their world, but it's going to be something that ministers to us. And I was thinking, you know, for me, being one of the—I'll I'll probably be in the, uh, you know, upper 2% of age of people who are there, obviously. Uh, but for me, you know, one of the things I think about training, the older I've gotten, the more I see the value of training. The older I've gotten, the more I see the need for training. And when I say value and need, it's not just for everybody. It's for me as well. So I'm looking forward to, to uh, learning and being encouraged by these folks. Yeah, I was thinking as as we were talking about the main theme being about um, anxiety and and having biblical hope as a youth worker, it's helpful because uh, that's not age specific just for students. So if a youth worker is doing their job properly, right, they are ministering specifically to students, but also to their parents who are the main um, spiritual um, disciplers in the in the lives of their students. So um, I I think it's going to be helpful for youth workers whether they're paid whether they're bivocational, whether they're volunteer youth workers. Um, we want all of you to come because we can all grow in this. Um, and so, Walt, I was thinking, you know, I looking on the website, which is very well done, easy to navigate. There's about 15 or 16 speakers that are coming to cover a big variety of topics. Um, Walt, maybe you can start out. How did we? How did you and Michael decide different categories for the topics Please that are going to be covered me. underneath uh, the bigger umbrella of anxiety? Yeah, so uh, one of the things we decided was we wanted to uh, definitely have depth, right? And we wanted theological integrity uh, in terms of the speaker lineup we have. And what were the specific things we asked that we need to address? And so as we were working on the breakout sessions, and by the way, there's going to be uh, six uh, smaller breakout sessions and one, um, you know, right at the beginning of the conference, a longer, you know, three-hour session. We're going to have four seminars in each. And as we were thinking about this, we said, okay, let's balance this out. All right. We're going to have four spots in each of our uh, breakout times. So we thought, uh, obviously, spiritual nurture needs to be a category. What can we teach youth workers? How can we encourage them, you know, to really do a good job in terms of spiritual nurture? This would be teaching the Bible, understanding the Bible, uh, leading our kids into discipleship, that sort of thing. We talked about, you know, youth ministry has a lot of um, there's just a lot of stuff we got to navigate. I'll use Duffy Robbins term, you know, the nuts and bolts of youth ministry. This could relate to, you know, to programming or or whatever, you know. 
And uh, so we thought about, okay, let's have a, a bucket on that, right, nuts and bolts. So let's put some some seminars in that. Certainly with us here at CPYU, we lean in, into exegeting culture and understanding culture and responding to culture biblically. This issue of anxiety falls into that, so we're going to have a bucket on uh, culture. And then lastly, we kind of had, Michael, I, don't, I can't remember what we called that last category. It was kind of like just sort of, you know, a wild card where we wanted to address some specific, specific unique issues to our times that, you know, people need to deal with. So, for example, things like, okay, uh, we've got kids in our youth group with ADHD or we've got kids in our youth group who are struggling with learning disabilities or what about ministry increasingly in our churches? I know we have this in our church here in Lancaster, ministry to immigrant kids and the unique situations that they deal with. So, yeah, Michael, yeah. do you remember what we called that? Yeah, it, I mean, it's special circumstances, unique yeah. circumstances. It got, mm-hmm. it got you know, narrowed down just on our chart to just be special. Um, and it's great. Like, we've got a, a seminar on youth ministry with adopted and foster kids in that area. We've got one, uh, another one just like, like uh, Kyle was saying, you know, uh, Danny Kwan's coming to do a whole seminar on working with anxious parents of anxious kids. And and when we made this slot, there's at, there's at least a couple of seminars that really do help specifically talk to how leaders can help their parents in their ministry. We have to always have them um, in our in our view um, because of how important they are in the lives of their students. Right. Um, so, yeah, we have the nuts and bolts. We have spiritual formation or spiritual nurture culture and then this kind of special, unique circumstances. Uh a really, really thick, um, exciting lineup. Yeah. Um, Brent, I was wondering, as you think about, as you mentioned earlier, now you serving, uh, kind of leading the way with RYM, what are you most excited about uh, as this will be uh, another uh, another time around the track for you of, of youth ministry training, kind of being in the helm here? What are you most excited about, about partnering with CPYU and having this seminar uh, or these seminars being available? Sure. Yeah, one of the things that I loved in, in jumping on with RYM, loved getting to be part of last summer, was just being at our conferences and actually starting to meet a lot of youth leaders that you know RYM serves in that capacity uh, through the conferences. I spent a lot of those weeks, uh, really, as a ministry of hospitality, is just getting to know those people, starting to listen to them, starting to hear uh, about both the joys and the struggles of doing youth ministry. And, and there are both. Uh, joys and struggles, to be sure. And so um, as we kind of come around to this cycle uh, of training events, getting to more, uh, have more concerted effort and time just being with youth leaders and continuing to foster those relationships to continue to, for me, to continue to meet a lot of new people. I I love that. I mean, it is, um, conferences are, there's a certain joy that comes uh, with seeing youth come together, especially in big crowds and worship together and play together and learn together. I mean, I mean, that is, if you can't appreciate that in youth ministry, it's probably time to do something else. Uh, but there is something very sweet about the training of this concerted time together, the cross pollinization of ideas, the, the shared value of what you're in it for, just knowing that that guy or that girl over there knows you or understands you and, and kind of knows what you do day in, day out. There is a special a special energy, a special um, um, beauty that comes in that for people uh, who can go there and take part in training together. So as, as kind of a bystander to it or someone who's very much involved in, in putting uh, it together from our angle, there's a joy in that to know that what we're offering people and what we get to partner with CPYU and and bring to youth leaders here at the summit, um, that it's going to have such a tangible uh, value add to their ministry and their life is a huge deal. And it's just, it's joyful. It brings me a lot of joy. Can I, uh, I'm just going to piggyback on that, what Brent said and, and, um, you know, mentioned since we were talking about these breakout seminar sessions, and I, uh, by the way, I'd love Michael for us to Maybe Kyle will ask us about this. I'll prompt him on that, like who's in the lineup and what some of the other topics are. But when you come and you sit in a breakout, uh, you're not just going to sit there for 90 minutes and take notes. We, we're we asking our presenters, and we'll be doing this as we present, we're asking them to feed you some really, really good content, right? We have to have that. We have to have depth and, theo- and, and good theology. But we, we also want, besides equipping you, we want to encourage you, and we want you to tap into 
the great wealth of your peers who will be there. So every seminar will offer an opportunity at the end, not only to interact with a presenter, but to interact with each other and start to strategize a bit about how to make this happen when you go back. And we're, you know, I've been working on something here to try to prompt folks right at the outset when we get there on how to do that and and what groups to think about as you listen and you learn while you're there uh, at the Northeast Youth Ministry Summit. Um, and and it, it all, it's not just to get head knowledge, right? It's to go back and really make a difference and really be equipped to share Christ and lead kids and families into a into a deeper faith. So there's that interactive piece that's going to be there. And that that's not just around the meals. We've allowed a lot of time for meals. All the meals can be taken there at the camp. Um, that'll be in the evening, late nights as well. We'll have that. Uh, but also in the seminars themselves, there'll be opportunities for this to happen. Yeah, which is a great point because uh, I, I agree with Brent that when we go, you know, have youth conferences and even some of the pastoral conferences that are available um, for youth workers to go to, it's fun to sit there and to hear an expert uh, talk when you're sitting in a stadium with 5,000 other people. But there's something special that comes when you come to like a summit like we're going to be hosting here in a few months, and you can talk to the person who is presenting afterwards about what they're doing. Like, you know, I joke around with Walt uh, that recently I was at a conference and I was going down an escalator and someone was coming up one and they asked me, why didn't you bring Walt Mueller with you? And, you know, we joke about that, that, you know, they just expected Walt would be here with me, but like, you know, you get to come and you get to sit with Walt after he presents on something and pick his brain. You get to sit with, um, John Parrott, who serves with RYM. And as he, I saw one of his topics that he's going to be talking on is just pacing ourselves in ministry. And when we think about, um, how so many youth workers run so hard and then burn out so quickly. This is a time not only, as Walt said, to come and learn, but also to pick the brains of people who have went before you as a youth worker um, and really just to be together for a few days. So I think maybe, yeah, the last place we need to go here, as Walt mentioned, is, um, Walt, I'll start with you, and then maybe um, as we, we can go around, kind of um, who we're excited. We have a lineup of about 16 people coming, but we talked about the topics that were picked, but just some of these people who are coming that our listeners might want to hear from. Um, Walt, why don't you start us out? Yeah, yeah. So let me let me jump into this. I'm looking here uh, at the lineup. And by the way, all this is online at nymsummit.org, nymsummit.org. I got it right that time. Uh, but if you go to nymsummit.org, you can see this and go through who the speakers are. Uh, one of the things that we've done is we've added on to the front end, if, if you can get there early enough on Monday, right, right after lunch from uh, 1 o'clock on through the rest of the afternoon, we're going to have some longer seminar sessions. And uh, I'm pretty excited about these as I look at these. Uh, Doug Franklin's coming from Leader Treks. He'll be with us the entire time. Doug, I, I know folks know Doug and love Doug, and, and I know Doug and love Doug, and, and he was a must-have. For this and so we're excited he's going to be there but he's going to do uh, Monday a, a longer seminar on developing your volunteers into a team Ashley Belknap who many people may not be familiar with her and what she does we've had her on the podcast but she's a part of a ministry in the circles that we run in called engaging disability and so she she understands what's happening with our kids uh, she's a parent who has kids she deals with this in her own life, and so she's resourcing the church as well. It's a wonderful, wonderful ministry, Engaging Disability. She'll be doing a seminar on enfolding students with disabilities into youth ministry. That's Monday as well. The two others would be uh, Get a Grip on Your Emotions with Robert Rowe, and I'm going to just a second go to Michael on that because you need to talk a little bit about the ministry Robert's involved with. And then uh, our good friend Duffy Robbins, Legal Issues in Youth Ministry. Man, that is such a big deal right now. And um, Duffy, because of all of, ex of his experience uh, having to navigate legal issues in his own life, is going to be there to, <laughs> to speak on this. So uh, actually, Duffy's done a lot of research on this. And, you know, his, his, Duffy's now teaching at Grove City College, and he talks about this in his youth ministry classes all the time. And you, you might think, okay, what, take, and, take, you know, half of one class session and talk about this? No. This is a big deal, and youth workers need to learn how to navigate this. So, uh, my, hey, Michael, would you say something about Robert and uh, get a grip on your emotions? Yeah, absolutely. So Robert is one of the student ministry coordinators for See Jesus, uh, which is a ministry started by Paul Miller, uh, a writer of A Praying Life and Love Walked Among Us. 
Um, they've got a number of excellent discipleship resources for the church. And Robert was a youth pastor for a number of years. And, uh, you know, one of the things that they've got with some of their curriculum is called the it's their stuff on the person of Jesus. And it's, you know, I think Robert would summarize kind of what that's all about is it, through his own life is he, as a pastor, for a long time, taught a lot about Jesus, taught a lot about the things Jesus said, a lot about what Jesus accomplished. Uh, but in so doing, we missed looking at in the Gospels who Jesus was and how he was the uh, the most complete human. Uh, he was looking at the person, his his thoughts, emotions, how he engaged with people. Um, so they've been working on some new curriculum. There's there's some curriculum already out there on the person of Jesus. How did he pray? How did he engage with people? What does his love look like? And all that good stuff. But they're working on some stuff on on Jesus uh, and his emotions. Um, and he's going to be doing a, this seminar with us. It's called Get a Grip on Your Emotions, but he's really just saying, you know, what would it look like if you had a whole new paradigm uh, for thinking about your emotions as it look at, looking through the lens of Jesus and how he was emotionally? That's not trying to say that, you know, Jesus is a, a therapist by any means, but I think that it is the kind of thing that when I've read some of the material from them and I've, I've been in other seminars that Robert has taught, it really does open my eyes to see Jesus more fully. Um, so that when I am reading through the Gospels, and even more so when I'm teaching through them, I'm able to help students see more of Jesus. I'm able to bring more of Jesus to bear uh, as I stop and look more at him as who is he individually, who is he as a person, and how is he engaging with other people. So it's, it'll be really hands-on. He, he does a good job of getting you thinking. In. You'll be right in the scriptures. If you like digging in the scriptures, uh, Robert's going to be in there with you walking through some passages and uh, looking forward to that very much. That's so good. I, I, you know, those front end seminars, those three hours, that's going to be a great investment. So we want people to get there early enough. We're going to take a break. When we come back, let's talk just, uh, we'll, we'll go through a list of who else will be there and what folks can look forward to. And then a little bit more, Michael, about how to register and what the cost is and who needs to come, all those, all those details. Uh, but we're very excited about the Northeast Youth Ministry Summit. It's coming up March 6th to 9th in Ligonier, Pennsylvania, just about three months away from now. Uh, it's not Christmas yet here while we're recording, but I got to tell you, uh, I sort of feel like a little kid before Christmas. As we were planning this, as I got to work with Michael and his team on this, uh, it's really been a lot of fun, and I'm very, very excited. So we're going to take a break, come back, tell you a little bit more about who's going to be there, what you'll learn, and all of the other details. Stay with us. Tens of thousands of kids have been trained by their parents and youth workers to think Christianly about music and media with our How to Use Your Head to Guard Your Heart 3D Guide to Making Wise Media Choices. This easy-to-use teaching tool needs to be in your youth ministry toolbox if you desire to teach your students to integrate their faith into all of life. Jesus calls us to follow Him, and that includes following Him into the six to nine hours a day of screen time that shape and mold the beliefs and behaviors of our kids. To learn more about our 3D Media Evaluation Guide and to order a copy for every member of your youth group, go to our website at cpyu.org. Teach your kids to engage with media to the glory of God. So we were talking during the break a bit about uh, scriptures and anxiety and just how this is front and center in the culture. You know, this is front and center in the Bible as well. People don't realize that the most oft repeated, the most repeated commandment in the Bible, 365 times, over and over and over again, is some, uh, you know, do not be afraid, do not fear, uh, do not be anxious, you know, some version or take on that, 365 times. So the scriptures do have much to say this. And Brent, you made a you, you had a good point while we were on the break. We were just chatting about that. Um, let folks know what you were saying and thinking about that and why this uh, conference is so important related to that. Sure, yeah. One thing that I saw just through years of being involved in, in college students' uh, lives was this, I mean, again, it was the rising tide of anxiety that was just, um, was and is prevalent in culture today and you know, culture just being the people's lives. And one of the things that, that I began to see that was an interesting and and I would even say unfortunate in some ways turn was uh, that 
uh, with the rising awareness of, of anxiety and its prevalence in culture, which I think, you know, in, in some ways it's really good that there was a broader realization um, of, oh, that there's a word or a, a name to what's happening in people's lives as they experience, you know, the effects of anxiety and anxiousness in lots of different ways that we kind of had a language and verbiage to talk about that and, and began to then um, bring in some tools with which to help them deal with this through counseling and, you know, at times psychiatrists, psychologists, and all the different things available. Um, for, for ministers, whether that's college minister, youth minister, pastor in a church, whatever it may be, um, there began to be this interesting dance of now that there was a, a professional realm that was speaking to these issues and perhaps even one-on-one -on -one, uh, through their realm of counseling or, or a doctor's appointment, whatever it might be, that uh, ministers sometimes <laughs> were sometimes sidelined in that uh, in that person's life because, you know, it's like the professional, in air quotes, was dealing with them or helping them in some other realm. And then, you know, the minister, all, it's like all they had to talk about was Jesus. And, and that's, you know, tongue in cheek a little bit, but um, what I, what I think my hope is for the summit is that as we begin to explore and really open up and unzip this topic of how do you bring biblical hope, uh, what the Bible says about not fearing, about addressing uh, causes for concern in life, anxieties, how do you bring the scriptures to bear in people's lives? Um, that's really something that we need. We are not just, uh, you know, we aren't just brains walking on legs. We are integrated people and, and we have our, our emotional lives to bear in this. Uh, it, it certainly would affect relationships. Uh, certainly the Holy Spirit is doing stuff in our hearts. I mean, all these things come together. And I hope that this time is empowering for youth leaders um, and those who serve uh, youth populations that they would come and realize, oh, I do have something to bring to the table. I do have. Uh, helpful thoughts. I have things that I can say and, and touch on as I teach through the Bible and as I counsel students one-on-one, -on -one, disciple them, and uh, even uh, think about people's lives evangelistically. I think the Bible has the most true picture of what it looks like to live fully human uh, and to be um, who God created us to be in his image. And so um, I, I want it to be an empowering time for students. And again, I, I say all this at the at the risk of sounding like I'm, I'm you know, putting down the professional realms and the psychiatrists and counselors. I'm not at all. I've personally benefited from um, people in that realm. I know, you know, most of us probably have at this point. Uh, but it's just to say, I think youth leaders, youth workers, pastors, uh, we all have something that we can offer in here and all the more reason to be trained in this realm so that we can offer um, you know, the best stuff uh, to those to whom we're ministering. You know, Brent, as you say that, it makes me think, uh, we've talked here on the podcast before that uh, even before I graduated from college, I was involved in working in the you know mental health psychiatric community at a private psychiatric hospital outside of Philadelphia on the adolescent ward. And I got to see firsthand uh, back then, now this was, you know, in the, in the 1970s, some of what students were dealing with, there's, there, you know, certainly what we saw there then is far more widespread now. I, I have that perspective. But it was interesting back then as a Christian and a young Christian in there with, with not a great amount of confidence, right, uh, to speak up or knowing exactly what the borders and boundaries were for what, what I could say, because it was not a Christian psychiatric hospital. There, it became clear to me that in the psychiatric community, there is this large, and I would say in our secularized community now, a growing portion of our culture that says for these problems, whatever these problems are, and in this case, we're talking about anxiety, stress, depression, um, the Bible is part of the problem, right? There's this sense that the Bible contributes to this. And what we understand, as you said, Brent, is that the Bible offers the answer to what it means to be fully human. And certainly Jesus you know, when we read the Gospels, we read him talking about these things. You know, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And then the commands of God, which, under, which as Ed Welch and David Pallison have said, all the 365 commands are, you know, that means if it's there that much, it's because God gets it. And so what we have to understand is, and, and you're right, we want to give youth workers the confidence to, you know, they're not going to become counselors as a result of, you know, professional licensed counselors as a result of the uh, Northeast Youth Ministry Summit and being there and getting the training, but they will have confidence to, to understand 
you know, which we need. I, I continue to need this, that the, that the Bible is not the problem. The Bible offers a solution. And so that's what I'm, I'm really, really excited about. And Walt, can you speak a little bit uh, to, as we think about just the different seminars uh, that are going to be offered, you're doing a two-part seminar on um, on sexuality and yeah. gender and, and uh, seeing things through a biblical worldview. I know as a youth worker, uh, the sexual revolution is real. If I think about the past two weeks, conversations I've had with students and parents who are trying to navigate this, um, like, why would you suggest this is like a top priority for this uh, summit to cover sexuality and gender? Well, this is where a lot of anxiety exists on the identity issue, right? Kids are trying to figure out who they are. I just read, you know, and folks who are listening are probably aware of this, that there is a narrative out there that you just, you know, be whoever you want to be. You feel your way into your gender. You feel your way into sexuality. That's what the sex positive movement is. And uh, it's a narrative kids are hearing long before they get into our youth groups. And so we need to know how to handle this. So I, what I was reading was uh, the story about the book that's been put out by the American Girl Dolls, which is a book for uh, young girls about how to grow up and even offers in that book uh, the option of, you know, if you can't figure out, you know, what you are, just ask your doctor and he can put you on puberty blockers and that'll give you some time to figure it all out. And, uh, you know, if you don't have an adult you can trust, including your parents, don't talk to them. I, I mean, it's a it's a, an extremely destructive narrative. And, you know, as Brent said, we want people to experience, we want our students to experience uh, human flourishing and to be who they were created to be. And that comes from God's good design for sexuality and gender. So we'll talk about how to teach and also give tools for what to teach, uh, you know, to launch folks on that. So I, I think that's really important because there's so much the identity issue is what causes so much anxiety anyway. We all felt it at some point when we were growing up. Uh, you know, like, who am I? What, you know, what am I supposed to look like? Where's my... And now it's that conversation's front and center, and sexuality is front and center in that front and center conversation. Yeah, and so before we kind of wrap it up and, and remind our listeners a little bit about um, how to sign up, Michael, any other um any other seminars that you want to mention that might be particularly helpful uh, for those who are listening to this podcast? I uh, man, you know, there's so many, I'm just sitting here looking at the list trying to figure out what I, what I would want to zero in on. I just think that uh, if you look at the, if you look at the lineup uh, you know, there's going to be something for, for every single youth worker out there, whether you're really new and you're looking for like Duffy Robbins is teaching, giving a talk from mouth to ear to mind to heart. And like Duffy's a gifted communicator and he teaches people how to teach. And it's like teaching is a ministry of the word. We're teaching the Bible. We always need to be getting better at that. And that's something that, again, is going to give you points, going to be helpful. Uh, developing a small group ministry. I mean, that's something that you need to be thinking through. How do we do that? And there's lots of ways to think through that. I'm, I'm super excited about Ashley Belk not being there with us from uh, Engaging Disability. Um, in addition to her strategies related to autism and other disabilities, um, you know, she she's going to be teaching one called Effective Bible Teaching to Mixed Ability Youth Groups. And mm. really what she's doing there is realizing that in your room of 10, 20, 50 kids, there's lots of different learning styles and things that you need to be thinking about to engage that group better. Um, and she's going to be giving really practical uh, tips and understanding about how to do stuff like that. Um, and I would say also something just along the lines of what she's bringing to us. You know, she says uh, youth ministry is the critical bridge for families remaining in church li lifelong. If students impacted by disability can thrive through the transition from children's ministry to youth ministry, the student and his family is 90 percent more likely to remain in church lifelong. Um, and I think that the the community of families in, involved with disabilities and children with disabilities like we need to stop thinking about, oh, we, you know, we only have a really narrow way to serve families who have adolescents in our churches. Uh, it's only getting more and more important. So and more and more widespread. And I think that she's going to do a great job of helping us think in little ways and very practical ways and even some big ways to create space to love families well, because we're not just about the students, as you said earlier, parents need help. We need to help parents. We need to help families. So I'm excited about her three or four things she's bringing uh, there was one other I just wanted to, um, I think I wanted to uh, just mention, well, actually two, uh, we're really excited about having Dr. Don Shepson from Grove City College come down. Uh, he's going to be doing a, a seminar on engaging students with spiritual disciplines that combat anxiety. 
Uh, again, we know that anxiety is a diverse reality uh, and it's not a read a Bible verse and get through it. But in our age, you know, of, of students not really being, you know, very, very well versed in how to engage with the scriptures and we want to help them do that. But spiritual disciplines are a lot just, just the liturgies and the practices of our daily lives that we all have so many. And uh, when we're out of when we're out of touch with the scriptures, with the Lord, you know, there are so many things that we can do to put our lives into the right story, into the right framework, into the right truth narrative. Um, and these kind of spiritual disciplines, these spiritual practices, I anticipate being very helpful. And lastly, just to say, you know, uh, the superstars, the podcast um, uh, famous Kyle and Linda of the Word and Youth Ministry, you know, they're going to be doing a, a seminar on getting the Bible, you know, creating a boss, a Bible reading culture in students in ministry, uh, which is so important. We need to be helping our students, not just teaching them the Bible, but teaching them how to read the Bible themselves and own that and feel more confident in it. And then I love, I can't wait to hear uh, more about um, how leaders, they, they're doing one called How to Engage Students with Theology. And I think that's another thing that without nuance, we just kind of just throw content at kids. Um, and there's so much rich theology that we can be learning from our brothers and sisters who've gone before us. Um, and, uh, and, you know, it's the whole read dead guys type thing. And it mm. not, doesn't mean that you're only dealing with that, but man, to find better ways to engage our students with robust theological concepts so that when they, as they're growing and maturing, um, they're not just kind of winging it. So I, those are just some of the ones that, that jump out at me that I wanted to throw uh, a quick hype for. Um, so we need to talk a little bit about kind of yeah. how to register and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, let, let me let me just uh, get, yeah, jump I, in. folks. If folks go to the website and scroll through, I think you'll be thrilled to see kind of what we settled on and, and the folks we're bringing in. I mean, I just add stuff on parent ministry, stuff on dealing with kids and technology, discipleship, leading volunteers, small groups, uh, responding to narcissism in our culture, programming strategies, strategizing long term. Uh, even something as simple as how to util utilize camps and conferences in your ministry. So it's a it's a full width and depth and breadth of of good teaching from folks who are experienced and you will be able to interact with while you're there. Michael, t tell us uh, more about some of the logistical details just beyond the date of March six to nine. Yeah, you bet. Um, so on the website, it's all laid out really clear. If you go to the pricing tab. Um, that's where you'll find out about kind of how to register and what registration looks like. There's four categories for registration, uh, standard registration for $399. It's all inclusive. You show up on Monday and you leave on Thursday. Um, and you can, you don't even have to pull your wallet out of your, uh, you know, out of your bag. Um, and that includes lodging, food, um, all the teaching t-shirt, you name it. There's going to be some freebies. Um, we're going to be sending you home with, uh, all kinds of goodies. Uh, so we're excited about that. There are a lot of folks who um, uh, either live nearby or would prefer to stay off site. The commuter rate's 309. Um, if you're a college student and you're listening to this, or if you know a college student who's interested in ministry, regardless of where they go to school, you've got a really good college student rate of $199. They can come whether they stay on site or off site for $199. They're just going to, uh, they're getting access to all of this. We're super excited about that. We want it. We want folks to be thinking about this. We want to affirm youth ministry. Uh, the the high calling that it is, the important needs of college students who are already kind of tra traject on that trajectory, thinking about ministry, it's a great way to do it. And I know for a lot of students in the Northeast, it's during spring break. So what yeah. better place yeah. to spend spring oh, break? Oh, yeah. You know, so I, 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 yeah, I'll throw on top of that, uh, Michael. You know, um, we're hoping, uh, it hasn't happened yet. They're working on it right now. Keep an eye on the website on this. But for the college student, there's a, a good opportunity or a good possibility, I should say, that they might be able to get a credit, a course credit for this. Mm. Uh, so we're working with a couple of schools on that right now, and keep your eye on the, uh, you know, on the website for that. I, I will throw in, you know, a lot of times people go, uh, "Do I come? Do I bring my volunteers?" I have mentioned this to numerous people, and they've gotten very excited. This was before we launched the website, and even after we launched the website, people said, "I am bringing my team." And um, one church I know of has thrown this out. Uh, as an invitation to, I think, 28 uh, of their paid staff and volunteers and hoping that they can get as many of them as, as they can there. And these are working people as well, right? Many of them who are going to get child care and, and come because they see this as valuable. So, uh, you know, Michael as well, I probably should mention that uh, on the website, um, the folks there at Lincoln Air Camp, Camp and Conference Center have uh, 
told us that the the Chamber of Commerce, I guess, right, in Ligonier has been very helpful. For, so for those who would prefer to stay off-site um, and, you know, maybe get an Airbnb or something like that, the, the hotel that's nearby and some other options, uh, you that's can right. learn about that on there as well. So. Yeah, on the accommodations page on the website for commuters, we do have some rooms booked uh, at the at the hotel in Ligonier. It's a pretty nice hotel. It has breakfast and everything. Um, there's a, There's rooms there, and they'll you know, there'll be a group rate available until they sell out. And we're going to try to keep in touch with them. If they fill up and they've got more rooms, we may try to add to that block. Uh, but the Chamber of Commerce website has a few other options. It's apparently a very um, vacation-y type area. So oh, yeah. there's lots of options in, in the area, especially if you're coming with a team and maybe you want to go somewhere and everybody stay like in a, in a house or a cottage or something together so you can debrief and hang out together. Uh, looks like a really great opportunity. Yeah, Ligonier is a great, great, great place. If people are not familiar with it, uh, it's right there in the Laurel Highlands in the you know uh, Appalachian Mountain Range, and um, there's there is there's a lot to do there. Uh, it's kind of horsey horse country, you know, from the Pittsburgh folks way back in the day. Uh, a lot of horse farms there. The the Flight 93 Memorial is uh, not far away. Um, there's many other things to see and do when you're in Ligonier as well. So it's a it's a beautiful setting, and the folks at the camp, man, they. The, they've got a brand new building. That's where we'll be for our large group meetings. Uh, they just opened that, and so we're excited to be in there for that. And uh, you can find some pictures of that uh, on on the camp website if you go and you check that out. Well, I think we're uh, we came to the end here. Uh, Chris Wagner, you have posted or you will post on the show notes anything we've talked about here. I think the big thing is what the website, right? nymsummit.org nymsummit.org I keep getting that thing right Uh, I keep going back and looking at it because I'm so excited about it I scroll through and just read what's going to happen and can't wait for it to happen so uh, Brent thank you thanks to RYM for all your good work on this and and I know we're going to have a lot more good work as the months go on here Uh, thank you Michael for the same thing Kyle uh, thank you for all you do. Uh, I'm grateful to all you guys, and I'm looking forward to being with you all in a few months. So uh, that said, check out nymsummit.org, and we'll be back and chat with you on the next episode of Youth Culture Matters. Thanks for joining us for Youth Culture Matters, a podcast from the Center for Parent Youth Understanding. If you'd like to learn more about today's youth culture, visit our website at cpyu.org. And if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, email us at podcast at cpyu.org.